of owning a cafe and other heroic deeds by Beware the Tristero, Chapter 97, Saturday, Part 1. Friday evening was like a dream. Oh man, not gonna lie, Shoni, I kind of wanted to marry you myself, you know? But I guess Dad Mine is a good guy, so it's okay. The Tots had been their usual endearing selves. Katsuki had hugged his leg alongside Izuku and Itoshi. Ah, uh, thank you, Kun. That's very sweet. I'll be much too old and wrinkly by the time you're grown into a fine young man you've become. And besides, whoever you do marry, if that's what you want, will know a lot more about memes than I do, right? To you and Otako had regarded him with starry eyes as he reassured them that, yes, they would definitely need brightest manes. They'd squealed and jumped into his open arms at the affirmation. Yeah, I guess. You're very amazing, though, Shoni. Hey, A.G. said he wanted to marry you, too, didn't you, A.G. Nikun? Hey? Nato, his blue eyes shimmering, had similarly been wowed by the chance to be a part of their big day. His body wrapped up in a hug that touched Nari and scooped him into. Thank you, I totally did. The ebony air boy confessed, his cheeks blushing. But... I like that, mate, and I think he'll be an awesome husband for you. Tamaki and Mirio, too, had gushed all over him, and he, in turn, had hugged them tight. We'd love that, Tamaki, thank you. Then he'd been swamped by his friends and been passed around them all. Moon, I'm so stoked for you! Today you had just texted me the selfie. Look at him, he's crying! He's going to come by on Sunday, you know, so long as the whole Todoroki thing goes as expected to cry on you for real. Obaro had been the first to grab him. He and his oldest Kyoseta sibling had been steadily dating for two years now as well. The bespeckled twin had applied for a job in Musutafa's aquarium now that his degree was all but completed so that they could be all together. Again, he may or may not have teared up at the thought of that. Hizashi, those lean yet strong arms enveloping him, had poured out his big heart as he squeezed him. The blonde and Seiji, equally having become as serious with each other, were often seen frequenting the Noronako. Their loved-up farms usually cozy together in a booth unless the teens enticed them into the gaming tournament. He couldn't be gladder to have the both so close. You have no idea how badly I wanted to spill the beans out. I am so cute, and I have all the feelings, and I can't. The more, of course, it glomped him. Tomoko had crowded around his back, whilst the older pro pressed him against her chest. When Jin and Jizome came to join them, he had tried to laugh despite the crushing of his lungs. Such good people. Well, since I wasn't able to tempt your way to become part of a throuple with myself and my darling Mariah, I suppose congratulations are in order. Mm? You'll make a dashing groom, I'm sure, and you simply must allow me to officiate the ceremony. Then Mariah and Atsuhiro, the latter kissing his cheeks, the tallest and leanest of their trio, chuckled at the trainee teacher's antics before placing a brotherly hand upon his shoulder. Thank you, my friend. The happiness you brought to all of us is one thing, but as someone who has known and loved Hoshinori since our time at Ue, well, to see him so full of life, I can't put my gratitude into words, really. The police force had been next. Kenji-san, his dog features fan, had pulled him in for a hug that was mirrored by Naomaza, which, after sending a text to the cat court man, meant that Mimi-chan, or girls, Ray, Mitsuki, and Inko finally got their turn to fawn all over him, their smiles wide and eyes tearful as Kohaku-san and his date walked over to join them. Hearty congratulations on hand. Oh, my favorite son. Well, I suppose it was only a matter of time before someone took you off the market, and it may as well be someone truly worthy of you, mightn't it? Hmm? Look no further for your maid's vanishes! No, no, we insist! You must leave all the planning to us, alright? Oh, oh, sure, I'm so, so happy for you! Oh. Inchan, here, have my hanky and show. I can only wish that you are as happy with him as we are with you, you know. You deserve nothing but the best. And lastly, he'd finally been able to approach his teens. All six of them. The group welcoming him into a shared embrace. Get that in that, my eh? 
That sounds pretty good to me. Ah, you're going to let me tell more and Zashi so I do all the lighting, filming, and stuff when you get itched, right? Spinner Ed grinned. You better not go soft on us and you're a husband, you know. Sparring with you is one of my most favorite things, so I expect you to keep at it. Rumi grinned, her expression suitably fierce as she flexed her biceps and waggled her brows. Ma, Ruchan, that's a little scary. We're supposed to be celebrating with him, you know? Keiko chuckled sheepishly while his partner huffed, her eyes glinting before she rubbed both of them in for another tight hug, which they both gasped at. I hope he knows how lucky he is, you know. You're a wonderful person, Shota-san. Ryuko, ever polite, murmured with a cute little bow, her cheeks delicately pink before she turned away, clearly a little overwhelmed by the rowdy atmosphere. Then, at long last, he'd been enveloped by his oldest boards, his sons, their smiles soft and eyes warm. You've gone and done it now, you crazy nuts old guy, okay? huh? Ah, eh, calling him dad instead of uncle will feel a little weird for a while, but I'm sure I'll get over it. Holding them close, he felt his eyes screwing shut. This doesn't change anything between us. I love you. I will always love you. You, Hitoshi, and the other kids on my world. Daddy knows that, all right? Feeling them juggle their arms tightening around him, he could only sigh at their words. Of course we know that, you big-hearted idiot. We would have called Araka san in with the bulldozers years ago if we thought he'd try anything stupid like trying to steal you away from us, you know? That evening, he and Toshinori had gone to their favorite beach for a walk to talk about the future and the blonde's plans for the apartments he was fixing to buy. I'm, I was also thinking about our teenage friends, the Todoroki's and shitso san too. The price is in the complex of very reasonable, and if rei san has a home large enough, once she's gainfully employed and completely cleared my child protective services, she could have a younger children in there with her, huh? And I want them in Shinsoku to have choices, too, so if you don't think it's too much, I am very interested in, in becoming the landlord of the complex altogether. Toshi, th that's be amazing. Investing in property is always a practical and logical thing to do, especially since we're doing so much good in the area, too. I, you really could buy up everything in my neck of the woods, huh? He juggled. Intelligent, handsome, rich. Is there anything you don't have or can do? Hmm? He teased at the wink he'd sent him along with a well-meaning snicker. The other had blushed bashfully and tried to play down his wealth again. The poor guy, knowing that he didn't appreciate people flexing money gained through heroism, was always doing that. It gave him many good opportunities to kiss him reassuringly, though, didn't it? Because sure, he never liked the idea of people running around in costumes to save people just so they could get paid and promote themselves. Their egos inflated and victims being left to suffer the devastation they've been rescued from with no funding or emotional support. Similarly, he still couldn't stand to watch pros striving to climb the opinion polls, show off in front of the public, or demand that people pay them for the privilege of an autograph or photo. They had been the main reasons why he disliked pro-hero society in the first place. However, the blonde wasn't motivated by money. Sure, he was given a great deal of it, but just like Marai, he shared out the majority of that wealth amongst the many people he employed, charity projects, UA, and hospitals. Since they'd met, become friends, and started dating, the bronze pro had gone even further with such good works too, which meant that he'd never get tired of telling him just how proud he was, just how pleased he was to see the lives of ordinary people transformed outside of one-off rescues thanks to his time, Everts and admittedly glorious smile. They both knew, of course, that he'd continue to love him even if he was penniless, and in turn, Toshinori had sworn he'd still love him even if he never baked him another muffin ever again. The big sappy dope. Saturday morning, however, could it be avoided forever? Koji, thank you again. At 700, he and his kids were loading their kit bags into the minibus that Denki's father had dutifully loaned for them once more. Think nothing of it, Show. I just wish there was more I could do for Dabi Kunivarsan, you know? Similarly, Kenji-san with Sons and Naomasa had arrived in their unmarked cars. Rei, Dabi, and Tomro would go with the former lieutenant whilst Mitsuki, Inko, and Spinner 
were the detective's passengers, just as Mimi-chan and the girls, all there for moral support, would be driven to Tokyo by Sansa. It was imperative, he thought, that Rei and her oldest son have as many people around them as possible. Nezu had truly gone above and beyond for them as well. The former Project Reformation teens and Nato, who also lived on Zeit, would be directly next door to them too. The counselors, similarly, would be across the hall and available morning, noon, and night. Shoni, we're all ready to go. Smiling down at Hitoshi, his hand ruffling those lilac lacks, Shota then turned back to his cafe, where the local pros Seiji, Chizome, and Jin were dutifully stood in their straight ca cafe aprons and caps. The seven of them would be manning the Nordaneko for the rest of the day, so that he could be with and support his extended family before assisting them in settling their newest members into the specialist school that would serve as their home in the first instance. Good luck, you guys! Pump that flame-bearded loser in the face for us! Or better yet, give him a patent and get that special! Such good friends. You got it. He called back. Take care, I will see you soon. The extra extra takoyaki batter in the chiller and the syrups will be cool enough to decamp by now too. Call me if you need anything or have any questions, okay? Driving through the late August heat, the minibus, relatively quiet, Shota sat in the front passenger seat and monitored the group chat set up specifically for this mission. Sasaki Mirai, Atsuhiro and I are still at Tokyo International Airport and... Ah, Endeavor has just walked through the arrival gate. All three children are present with two of the nannies previously identified by our friends at the monastery and they're making their way to his private car by the chauffeur we've arranged for them. Oh, thank God. When their flight had been delayed... He'd been worried that the jig was up. Sasaki Mirai. The drivers just confirmed that the Todorokis will be headed to Park Yacht Hotel for a few hours before attending the tournament. He's been instructed to pick them up at 9.30 and should be present for the opening ceremony at 10. All three children will be competing in the same areas as our study group as well. Aizawa showed up. The other kids, how were they? Did they look all right? He couldn't help but ask, even if it was a difficult question for Marai to answer. He almost couldn't bear the thought of seeing them injured or worse. Atsuhiro. From what we could see, they're as okay as they can be. No souvenirs or smiles, but we'll still change that, eh? Oh, it's time for us to go. We'll check in again when we reach the hotel, all right? Try your best not to worry, sure. But we're my darling, and I should then never get suspicious. Nothing will be for those kids. You have my word. Letting out a breath, he watched as the lovers went offline, his eyes briefly closing. They were so cl they were close, so fucking close to getting them away from that monster, weren't they? Yagita Shinori. Shoto-kun, both Hosensei and Tadeo-kun have just arrived at the Budokan and are filling in your registration forms. And uh, you'll be refereeing, taking part in the tournament and leading a ceremonial exhibition. Your younger brothers seemed quite taken aback. Is everything all right? As I were showed up, Ojiro Shisho sprained his ankle training yesterday and asked if I wouldn't mind stepping in, since his son isn't proficient in the art yet. It's no big deal, really. Nakito Shinori. But, but, Shotokun, you, you're going to do a, a foul dance? Having the eraser crack user finally rolled his eyes. Surprised. He typed back. That the right hand's fans can be an excellent defensive tool. That and, well... Tadeo challenged me to master it when we were younger. He didn't see the merit in the art of such forms because to him, Kendo was king. So, after badgering Moto Sensei, I met one of his friends who taught Kung Fu, Tai Chi, and the rest, as they say, is history. He told him, Tadeo won't admit it even now, but we both know that I've proven him wrong. Not that he's ever tried it. Is he still doing his exhibition show? Katsuki and Eijiro haven't stopped talking about how they can't wait to see him wield a real katana. He furthered whilst trying to deflect attention away from himself. It wasn't as though he was embarrassed, per se, but showcasing the more beautiful and arguably delicate side of martial arts always came with a great deal of, for lack of a better word, scrutiny. Not that he was nervous, not at all. He just had more important things to worry about, didn't he? So, Nagito Shinori, wait, wait, shot good. If it's not a big deal, then why am I currently holding a beautiful silk red costume? Red silk costume that you'll be wearing. Oh, it's gorgeous. Can I buy it for you, please? 
feeling his cheeks he brought with color, his face having to snap to the window for fear of Koji seeing the flush no doubt considering his features. The eatery owner felt that weird type feeling the other men often invoked in his chest, sparking to life once more. As the hour showed it, don't be ridiculous. He typed hastily. Those robes are incredibly expensive and illogically ornate. It's a complete waste of money. I mean, where would I wear them? When would I wear them? He tried to argue, his mind praying that the other man saw sense. Yagato Shinori. Several slay smile emojis. No. <laughs> no way. Was he... Smirking? Did he really mean... Did he want him to wear those clothes... In private? In the bedroom? Feeling his temperature skyrocket, he just about stopped himself from squeaking indignantly. Pervert. He accused. No, absolutely not. Hagito Shinori. Oh, please. Show the good. Please. For me. Sighing. The cafe owner rubbed his left hand down his face and found himself momentarily grateful that Tomra and Dabi were in a different car so that they couldn't see him caving into his lover and his silly whims. As our showed up. Fine. He begrudgingly typed. But I, I'm not dancing for you and them, all right? Yagi does you know it. Whatever you say, Kitten. Whatever you say.